Hello everyone, you're welcome to the Open Heavens by the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Oklahoma City. The Open Heavens Daily Devotional is written by Dad in the Lord, Pastor E. A. Adebwele. And today is the 20th day of June and our topic today is Refuse to be intimidated. But before we continue, I'd like us to say a word of prayer. Father, we thank you, O God, for another opportunity to hear from your word and to hear from you, Lord. We ask, O God, that you open our eyes one more time to behold wondrous things out of your love. Father, bless us, O God, with your word. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. So our topic today is refuse to be intimidated. And our memory verse is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 28. It reads, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both the soul and body in hell. Hallelujah. So our God is telling us this morning that we should fear not. We should not be afraid of anything that comes our way. As a matter of fact, there are up to 365 of fear not in the word of God, in the Bible, and each of it is for each day. Like we have 355 days. So God is telling us, reminding us this morning that we should fear not. Whatever thing that is trying to intimidate us, whatever thing that is trying to test our faith, we should hold fast to God's word and we should fear not. Then our text is taken from the book of Daniel chapter 4 verse 12 to 18. It reads, The leaves thereof were fair, and the fruits thereof much, and in it was meat for all. Hallelujah. So the beast of the field had shadow under it, and the fowls of the heaven dwelt in the bowls thereof, and all flesh was fed of it. I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and an holy one came down from heaven. He cried aloud and said thus, Hew down the tree and cut off his branches, shake off his leaves and scatter his fruits. Let the beast get away from under it and the fowls from his branches. Verse 15. Nevertheless, leave the stump of his roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass, in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beast in the grass of the earth. Let his heart be changed from man's, and let a beast's heart be given unto him, and let seven times pass over him. Verse 17, this matter is by the decree of the watcher and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will and setteth up over it the basis of men. Verse 18, the last verse. This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now thou, O Bethshazzar, declare the interpretation thereof for as much as all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation, but thou art able, for the spirit of the Holy God is in thee. Hallelujah. We know the story of Nebuchadnezzar, how he was so proud, calling himself a God and all that. But God brought him under suggestion. God showed him that he, he alone, the Almighty God, is the ruler of the whole earth. He can bring down any man. He can put any man to any position he wants because he's the king of all kings and he alone is the lord of all lords so he showed Nebuchadnezzar that he alone is the king of kings and we know what happened to Nebuchadnezzar he was subdued like an animal and he was living his life like an animal so God is the almighty God so we should not be intimidated by any challenge that comes our way we should not be, we should not be intimidated by whatever thing that Reset his ugly head against the knowledge of God in our life. Whatever thing we're going through, just present it to the Almighty God because He's the ruler of the whole world. He said the heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord. So whatever thing you're, you're going through, just present that case to God. Tell him, Father, this is what I'm going through. In fact, he wants us to put him in remembrance. It's not like he doesn't know what we're going through. He sees everything because he's the omnipresent God. He's always at at he's always in on time, like he's always with us. So he knows what we're going through. All he just needs us to do is just to present our case to him, remind him. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 20, say, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He is knocking because it's not like he cannot barge into our lives. But no, he's a God that um, respects our will. And that is why he wants us to present our case. If you open the door for him, he's going to come in and take control of whatever thing you're going through. 
So that is reminding us that we should not be intimidated by anything we're going through. Hallelujah. So do you have any desire that seems impossible? Our God is the God of impossibility. There is nothing, absolutely nothing difficult for God to do. He's the one that walked upon the waters. He's the one that he has raised the dead. He has, he has done a lot of mighty things. So your case is not a new case. He's just trying to um, try your faith. And of course, he's going to give you victory in the end. In Jesus' name, amen. So uh, the book of Exodus chapter 14 verse 13 says, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians, the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them no more. Hallelujah. That is a wonderful promise of God for us. The Egyptian, what is that Egyptian that stands before us? The Bible says, who is that mountain that stands before Zerubbabel? Who is that mountain that stands before the children of God? It shall be made a plain. Hallelujah. So the word of God in the book of Exodus says that we should stand still. We should hold on. We should trust in God in totality. Like trust in the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. It means trust in the Lord 100%. Don't have a plan B. If God does not do it, let him not do it. That's the kind of um, doggedness we should have as children of God. So stand still and see the salvation of God. He will come true. His word is here. And amen. Hallelujah. Then there must be always something to trust God for. Like, like that is why um, God is God. If, if we don't have challenges, we will not come back to him. So he, he's, he's a jealous God. He always wants us to run back to him. And that's why sometimes he, allow, he allows certain things to come our way. But those things, they are not coming to consume us. He said, I will not allow the temptation that you cannot overcome to come your way. So sometimes they come, he allows those things to come so that he will glorify himself in our life. So whenever you're going through a challenge, one of the things I do is whenever I'm going through, I, I tell God, Lord, glorify yourself in this challenge. I know you want to glorify your name. Glorify your name in this challenge. This sickness is not unto death. This challenge is not going to swallow me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Then unbelief is the opposite of faith. You know, the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. So when, as a child of God, whenever you're um, allowing intimidation and fear to take over your life, it is a sin. Because the opposite of, of faith is fear. And what is fear? Fear is not trusting God. Fear is living in doubt. A double-minded man cannot receive anything from God. A man that is afraid of things that are around him will not receive anything from God because his trust is not in the Lord. So this morning, our dad is telling us that we should refuse to be intimidated. We should put our trust in the Lord in totality. Like, Lord, is all about you. Just like Esther, if I perish, I perish. It's all about you. Just like Daniel. Daniel said, I'm not going to defy myself with the king's meat. If he doesn't save me, let him not save me. Even in the lion's death. He said, if you don't if you don't save me, don't save me. But I'm not going to bring I'm not going to look back. I'll continue to save you all the days of my life. And he showed up. We all know the story of Daniel, um the, the fourth man in the fire. When the three broke Hebrew men were thrown in the in the fire and the Lord came and delivered them. The, the Bible says that the people that even threw them into that fire, they were burnt, they were they were they couldn't even see the next minute. But the people that were in the fire, the true wise men that were in the fire, could, they were not even burnt. No, no, no. Even the smell of smoke was not even oozing out of their body. So God is able to meet us at the point of our knees. Just hold on. Though it tarry, it is to come to pass. Hallelujah. Then the book of Mark, um, according to the book of Mark, in Mark chapter 3, verse 1 to 5, the Bible records that Jesus asked a man in his synagogue to stretch forth his hand, knowing fully well that it was with that if that man had refused to act in great faith, he would have missed his miracle. So we should act in great faith. We should we should um push our faith. We should we should not doubt, just hold on to God. The more you use your faith, the more your faith grows. So everything we go through, there are trials of faith. Hallelujah. So our daddy gave us a practical um, testimony of a lady in his of one of his daughter, or daddy Jesus daughter. Not like I don't know if it's his biological daughter, but he said he called him called her his daughter, and he said that she had this kind of swamp, uh, a little womb. The doctor told her that she has a small womb that she cannot carry a child until um, the day of delivery. Like she cannot carry a child to full time. But God showed up, and this woman took in and gave birth to four children, quadruplets, four kids on the same day. That is the God we serve. He's a God that wants to um, blow our mind. He's a God of the impossibility. Somebody calls him the God of overdue. When you ask him for one, he does more. So that's the God we serve. So our God, our dad is telling us that we should not be intimidated. Just hold on to your faith. And our prayer point today is 
Father, please destroy the power of doubt and intimidation in my life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, we ask, for oh God, that you destroy the power of doubt in the name of Jesus. In any way we have doubted you, we ask for your mercy and we ask, for oh God, that you help us, to oh God, to trust you in totality in the name of Jesus. And what is that mountain that stands before you? May they plain in the name of Jesus. We stand on your, on your word in the book of Isaiah that says, Though the enemy shall come like a flood, the Lord will raise a standard against it. Lord, we raise a standard against every power holding our miracles in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Lord, for answering our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you tomorrow. Have a good day.